Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm gonna give you three simple tips you can use to get rid of your waiter's tray serve. The waiter's tray serve is a killer for so many players, where the racket, as soon as they toss the ball, opens up, they point their strings at the sky, and then just push the ball into the box. You wanna use a more circular motion. I'm gonna give you three drills that are gonna help you step by step get rid of the waiter's tray so you can use the proper service motion. Drill number one is, and you don't, I know I'm on a tennis court right now, you don't have to do this on a tennis court. You could literally just shadow swing with me in your house as you watch this video. But the first drill is to toss the ball up and lift your racket so that the racket is around chest height and a ball could sit in the throat. Notice my palm is down, my strings are down. So watch this again, I'm gonna toss, lift the racket, notice I'm not catching the ball, I'm just letting it bounce, and I'm gonna stop when my racket is palm down, strings pointing down. This is the exact opposite of what people do in the waiter's tray. The waiter's tray is you toss and you'll immediately point your palm to the sky and the strings to the sky. So you wanna reverse this by doing the complete opposite. So last time, toss, lift the racket, and just have it so you could place a ball in the throat of the racket. Drill number two. This is where you're gonna learn to salute. So what you wanna learn, it's really simple. With your palm facing down, just salute, almost like you could put your left arm in the air or your tossing arm in the air like you just tossed. With your palm down, remember, this was where we just stopped in the previous drill. Now you're just gonna salute. And when you salute, you're gonna keep your strings pointing down the whole time. This is the move you wanna make when you get rid of your waiter's tray because the racket's gonna pass in over the head. You look at Osaka, you look at Federer, Kyrgios, you look at Novak Djokovic, Sam Groth, their racket passes right in over their head and if you can get it with the strings pointing down, that's a double whammy against the waiter's tray serve. One little extra bit you can do here with this drill is you can actually place the ball in the throat of your racket and just make this move where the ball never falls out of the racket. Remember, if you're using the waiter's tray, you're used to the racket opening up and the ball falls out. So drill number one, toss, the strings point down. Drill number two is to salute, but you can do it with a racket in the throat and you're gonna make this move and never let the ball fall out. Now, drill number three, I'm gonna go off camera here for a second. This is what I am known for. I haven't made a birthday hat video in a really long time, but I thought I would. Um, the birthday hat, and I'll give you the, the history. About six years ago, I was on court with a bunch of eight-year-olds, and they were all you know, doing the waiter's tray serve, and I thought, how could I get them to understand the proper motion on the serve? And I thought, ah, unicorns can't serve correctly. Well, it, and it's true, right? A unicorn cannot serve correctly because the racket would hit the horn. So I thought, what's a fun way for the kids to understand the racket path and hitting something above their head? So I got a birthday hat, and I put it on all the kids' heads, and the next week, it was unbelievable, the improvement that you saw when they wore the birthday hat. Now, one thing, and I've seen coaches on YouTube talking about the birthday hat, and they always, and they tend to, in a disparaging way, talk about the birthday hat, but it's because they put the birthday hat in the wrong place. You don't want the birthday hat in the back of your head. You want the birthday hat literally like it is a unicorn horn in the front part of your head, because the waiter's tray would never hit the birthday hat, but, hitting the birthday hat, gets rid of the waiter's tray, and all of a sudden you've got that unicorn kind of feel. My birthday hat is stuck, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna hit some serves right now, and I want you to notice how I hit the birthday hat with my racket, and I wouldn't do so if I had the waiter's tray. So I'm just gonna hit some serves and hit the birthday hat this way. Notice my strings are pointing down as I serve. The nice thing about the birthday hat is it gives you instant feedback as to whether or not you're doing the waiter's tray. And I'll hit a waiter's tray serve. Notice, <laughs> it's so hard to serve that way, but you'll notice I'm going nowhere near the birthday hat. So it gives you the instant feedback. If you're a coach, give your players a bunch of birthday hats so that they know if they move the racket in over their head like Osaka, like Roger Federer. So let's go over this again. Drill number one, toss the ball and just stop and freeze and have the strings pointing down so that you could put a ball in the throat of the racket. Drill number two, learn to move the racket in over the head so that the strings face down the whole time. Now, does Roger Federer do that? 
No. Roger Federer moves his racket in over his head, but the ball would fall out. But he's still hitting the birthday hat. He's still hitting the birthday hat every time. And then the last thing is wear a birthday hat, an actual birthday hat when you serve. If you go through those first two drills, then hitting the birthday hat becomes pretty easy. I would love in the comments below if you let me know what you thought of this drill progression. Even let me know if you've gone through this drill progression and how it's worked for you. But if you use these three drills to get rid of your waiter's tray serve, there is no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.